Hi everybody, it's Adam with HeartValveSurgery.com. I'm thrilled to be here with Dr. Eric Weiss, who's the director of the Aorta Program at Aurora St. Luke's Medical Center in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. We're answering questions, Dr. Weiss, that came in on our Facebook page and at my blog, all about heart valve disease and related cardiac disorders. And we got a question from Joseph. By the way, thanks for being here. And thank you for having me. It's a thrill, thrill to be here. Yeah. And so Joseph writes in, I had mitral valve regurgitation in April of 2017. After a follow-up in July, my cardiologist said to me my aorta valve was dilated at 4.5 centimeters. I think what he may have meant was his aorta. And surgery might be necessary at 5 to 5.5 centimeters. Could this repair in April and or strenuous prolonged exer exercise cause the aorta to grow? Well, that is a really interesting question. So, Adam, you know, Adam, thanks for having me, and thanks for all that you do for patients with uh, heart valve disease and aortic disease. Uh, you know, it's a, a, appreciate being here and having the opportunity to answer this question. And thanks for the question to Joseph. It's uh, there's a lot of po points to that question, and I bring up a lot of interesting, a lot of interesting aspects. I think the first is the correlation between mitral valve disease and aortic and aortic disease or aortic aneurysms. Uh, we don't think of that often, but there are some conditions, particularly genetic aortopathies, that can lead to a stretching of the aorta and lead to a stretching of all of the valves of the heart and parts of the heart. And so I would say it is, it's rare for mitral valve disease to be linked to aortic disease. We often think of uh, aneurysms being linked to aortic valve disease, but if someone has one of these connective tissue disorders or aortopathies, they may be as well prone to mitral valve dilatation. The only way to know that is to do genetic testing and or look at, at Joseph's family history to determine whether or not that's, uh, you know, that's a problem. Uh, so to answer his question about when the aorta needs to be re repaired or replaced, usually the typical indications are about five and a half centimeters. But in patients who have genetic aortopathies, uh, we generally bring that indication lower. So even as low as four to four and a half centimeters for patients who have a genetic predisposition or a weakened connective tissue. So for that reason, it's, it, it is an important question and it's an important thing to know. Yeah, so in response to Joseph's question about whether or not prolonged exercise or, or strain can cause the aorta to grow, that's an important question. It's unlikely that the surgery he had before had any effect on the aortic size. We don't do anything to the aorta when we do mitral valve surgery. That's probably just a condition that's developed over time. But strenuous strain or exercise can sometimes cause aortic dilatation. Uh, we say that usually it's extreme heavy lifting, the type of lifting that causes you to grunt or strain and really, uh, and really stress, things like half to two thirds your body weight. Uh, that can sometimes cause elevations in the blood pressure, which can cause the aorta to grow. And so we always tell people with aneurysms to try to avoid those types of heavy lifting activities. On the other hand, exercise, raising your heart rate, is actually very good for your aortic health because it lowers your blood pressure and tends to put less strain, stress and strain on your aorta over time. So exercise and heart rate elevation is good, but extreme heavy lifting, the kind that causes you to grunt or strain, is generally bad. Great. Well, Joseph, I hope that helped you. I know it helped me and the other members of our community. And Dr. Weiss, thanks again for all the great work that you're doing. Really appreciate you. Thanks so much.